Taylor Marsh, and this is Astral Soul Lightning, a podcast about making meaning through mythology, synchronicity, and the cosmos, understanding the world and what it means to be human through a wider lens. We are in a liminal passageway where we aren't meant to know the road ahead. To sit in uncertainty is the way of the artist, the creator. Time to review your process, get comfortable with how you work as the eclipse's evolutionary energy works on humanity. On April 8, there is a total solar eclipse in the sign of the initiator, Aries. This is also the sign inhabiting the point of the lunar node, the north node. People say, astrologers say, that the north, lo- the north node is destiny. And when you have a solar eclipse in this kind of way, in a sign like this, it portends something personal is going to happen. It is a personal eclipse, in my opinion. Humans must adjust to the universe changing the shape of our energetic reality. At the same time as this total solar eclipse, there is a new moon, the first since the equinox. But let's back up a minute. On April 1, Mercury, the archetype associated with communication, goes retrograde. It doesn't mean it's orbiting backwards, which is actually an optical illusion, but the effect is a stationary pause to retrace, rethink, and appreciate the work that came before 2024, before Aquarius began its dance with Pluto, before the 2024 eclipse season that shifts our view, our emotional state, and the importance of the work we've done over the last year. This happens personally and collectively. And by collectively, I mean in countries, where leaders are making decisions and people are reacting. There is likely something you must discard, weight you no longer need to carry. Likely it has something to do with your inner dialogue and how you treat yourself or how others treat you and you want to be treated and the work you do. There are elements that can't be seen at present. We don't know the full picture of how we'll navigate life once the eclipse season passes, which is at the end of May, around the 21st, and into uh, the next month. And there are dynamic events that happen all through this month. It is a very important time for humanity. Most of April, however, will be spent in some sort of reflection and retracing and reimagining. The hardest things for humans to do is nothing. Action is our advanced way of thinking. We're on the right path. But action isn't always, doesn't always come at the right time. We push ourselves to act even when we're not ready or uncomfortable. We just feel that that's the way we are supposed to do things as a creative being because we're told to always keep doing something, keep doing something, keep feeding, feeding your uh, creative vibe, if you will. During retrograde seasons, especially when archetype Mercury is involved, action means review. It doesn't mean something new. It means rewriting that article, that book chapter, or looking at that project that you threw away that you just loved but weren't ready to do, or delving into your journal to pour out the unknowable outcomes of your present situation. Get the angst on paper. I navigate, I navigate through my instincts, intuition, and psychic nudges and downloads, so it's possible to receive a hint on what's coming. It's still not the moment to make big decisions. The more you spend time with yourself in the quiet and letting your mind work, the more you will receive these types of messages. 
Of course, you may feel like you're being pulled in a particular direction, but I'd ask you, what's the rush? Is a decision needed immediately? Is someone pushing you for a decision? That's their timeline. It doesn't mean that it's yours. Each of us is the judge on when to act, but there are times when action isn't favored because there is too much hidden energy we can't feel into yet. If anxiety rises, the best thing to do is go back down into the process you trust that has worked for you and double down into it. Go back to what has worked before. Eclipse energy scramble our priorities because there's so much unseen energy we aren't taught to respect or even acknowledge. Modernity insists we charge forward daily. If if we don't follow this rule, our advantage will be lost. The opposite is true. Once you learn to follow your own rhythms, the confusion subsides. The process takes over and meaning is restored. If you've lost the way of your process, start in the quiet after you first wake up. Turn on your favorite music that inspires you. Sit with the sound and let your emotions hook in. Or take a walk. Everybody has something different that grounds them. Listen to your mind babble. It's actually brain babble that that infiltrates your mind. What's at the heart of your frenetic mood, your anxiety? Journal about it. Journal about your mood. Then go deeper into your emotions. What's the emotion at the bottom of it, at the foundation? You can be in a bad mood, but then you find out it was because someone insulted you and you're taking their words as gospel instead of listening to yourself. What's driving, the most important thing is, is, is find out what's driving your angst. The communicative power of the Mercury archetype works differently in retrograde. It is tremendously healing. Retrograde season in Mercury is a powerful time for all creatives to, to think a, a different way about our projects, what we do in the world, and whether our efforts are feeding our soul or simply frustrating our ego because we don't get enough likes. Here, here's how one website chooses to overplay Mercury retrograde. Now, I'm not making the authors of this the bad guy because this is conventional wisdom <laughs> on how Mercury retrograde works. Quote, starting April 1, Mercury retrograde will ravage our lives as it moves through Aries until April 24th. And right in the middle of this transit on April 8th comes an intense solar eclipse in Aries 2. Nonsense. Now, your life may be ravaged, but I guarantee you it's not because Mercury went retrograde. It's because of your own choices or the choice to abdicate your life to someone else's choices. But Mercury retrograde does none of these things. This is part of the ancient quote unquote wisdom and how uh, astrology became demonized even as the elites, including the religious elites, continue to uh, tap astrology. The human choice to allow a season in the year to, to reign chaos is our own because archetypes, planets, and other cosmic entities do not make human, humans act one way or another. Back when Christianity took hold, the religious elite forbade the use of astrology, pushed it underground because of its alleged, quote-unquote, predictive powers that were seen as blasphemous. I wonder what uh, the religious elite would have thought if, let's say, um, their cult leader decided to sell Bibles and say that it was the Pope's words inside and started to do uh started to include all of the roman uh um attitudes toward how life should be lived 
that's a that's an ex- extreme example. When you have people and politicians actually co-opting the Bible for American elections. Now, on this Easter weekend, uh, these kinds of things really bother me. Yes, um, I am an independent Christian. <laughs> I I. I don't go to service anymore. I'm a fallen Episcopalian, but I still, I still see Jesus as a role model, but not as today's Christianity looks at him. Jesus is a revolutionary, like Martin Luther King. He is a revolutionary. He, his. His influence can be revolutionary, but you have to separate it apart from institutional Christianity, which has fallen apart and is now a personality cult, a cult. Jesus was crucified, and I personally think the entire meaning of the crucifixion has been lost through hyper-patriarchal uh, influence. And the first of it had to do with making women incapable or unable to directly deal with God herself. Women can't do that in the elite Christian archetype uh, and architecture. Uh, organized religions don't, most of them don't allow women as leaders. Look at the Catholic Church. Look at the Mormon Church. There are many um, uh, Christian churches that don't allow women as leaders. This is when everything went wrong. To me, Jesus was a revolutionary who attacked the ruling class. What happens in ancient times if a young revolutionary that doesn't use weapons but only uses words attacks the ruling class and becomes popular? When Jesus on the cross screamed at God that he may be saved this end, and there was no answer, and spirit was given up. This was the cause and the cost of his behavior, of his choices. He was saying in a different way, our actions against the state may cause our own demise. He was making a different statement, in my opinion. Was there a resurrection in physical state? We all are resurrected. Our spirit is incarnate more than once. These are, these are blasphemous things to say. These are sacrilegious things to say. That doesn't make Christ less. It makes him more. It makes his choices even more powerful to me. But even in the Episcopalian (laughs) religion, uh, my theories, which I've, I've written about in my thrillers and I've talked about in other podcasts and the relationship with Jesus and Mary and how strong it was and how much the hidden books of the Bible tell a fuller story about Jesus, about the women, about Mary being his first disciple. And if I have one message to non-Christians and atheists and everyone else— Uh, who has no belief in religion, I certainly understand that. But you can appreciate a religious revolutionary who walked across earth in the Middle East at a point in time when he challenged the ruling class and he died for it. This is an impactful moment of understanding the path of becoming whether it's Jesus or ourselves, we will have to stand up against the outside world that has gone crazy. We are all Jesus's disciples this year as we try to save ourselves from the blasphemy and sacrilege coming at us from some politicians. 
and and that they scoff at astrology and they scoff at at, at all the different things I talk about and 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 the full meaning of Einstein's mis- mystery and how it is the start of all art and science the intuition sure uh Einstein didn't have a personal god but do any of us have a personal god we have personal guides but god is a universal energy i i think it is the law of attraction the 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 most powerful thing on earth the creative power but most importantly, astrology was always meant as a timekeeper, using astrology as a way to understand timing of human manifestation, but also when it's time to keep your own counsel and sit with your creative visions, thoughts, and dreams. Your intuition, instincts, and the authentic voice dis- you discover will do the rest. More from wellandgood.com on Mercury retrograde in the initiator sign of Aries. Quote, meaning you won't just be feeling the classic retrograde hangups, but also you'll be faced with the fated events and destined opportunities of eclipse season at the same time. Well, the second half isn't too bad, but there are no classic retrograde hangups. Unless, of course, you decide in the next 20 days you are going to pack your, your schedule with everything you can to do as much as you can. You're going to be in trouble because Mercury retrograde is, a, is, is one, of the, one of the times during the year where the timekeeping is glitchy. There are no classic retro, retrograde hangups unless you decide... There are these impediments. Four times a year, humanity faces moments where we can make changes or the universe will move the earth underneath us. That's metaphorical. These, these are fated evolutionary moments when synchronicity acts on humans personally, humanity collectively, and when people with strong shadow side, strong status, uh, shadow side fury choose to act out. Fated moments occur when time is fulfilled and movement is assured in our lives, in our collective experience, but also are synchronized to what's happening above. Creativity is an arc. The process you choose must be authentic and incorporate your true voice. Come out of that true voice. First job of the creator is to banish what you've been taught. <laughs> you learn all the rules, then throw them away. In performance especially, you, you learn all these rules, and then when you get on stage, something else must ta- come through you. Over a lifetime, this will include your own past thoughts and visions that no longer apply. I'll be on holiday next week, back on April 12th. Lot ha- a lot is happening next week. Take it easy. Don't push. Time for more understanding of your process. Reclaim the way you create to honor who you are becoming. I'm Taylor Marsh, and you've been listening to Astral Soul Lightning. You can find out more about me at taylormarsh.com. Thanks for listening. Until next time.